Welcome to the deep dive. Mm -hmm. Today we're diving into a real mystery. Uh, how do tumors manage to thrive despite our, you know, powerful immune systems? You've sent us an article about a fascinating piece of the puzzle, these regulatory T-cells or TREGs. They're usually like the peacekeepers of our immune system, but it turns out they might be playing a different role in cancer. It's a case of a good guy gone rogue. You see, our immune system is a carefully balanced network, and TREGs are essential for making sure it doesn't attack our own body. Right. They stop the immune system from getting overzealous and causing collateral damage. But how do they actually, how do they do that? What's their, their MO? Well, they have a few key tactics. Um, they can suppress other immune cells that, you know, get a little trigger happy, uh, release calming signals that sort of dampen the immune response, and even compete for vital resources that other immune cells need to function. It's like a cellular game of capture the flag. Okay, so they're like highly trained diplomats keeping everything running smoothly. But the article you sent us suggests that tumors have kind of found a way to exploit these peacekeepers, right? Exactly. And the key to understanding this manipulation lies in a particular protein found on TREGs called CD25. Imagine it as a high sensitivity antenna on the surface of the TREG. Okay, and what is this antenna tuned to? What's it picking up? It specifically picks up signals from a molecule called IL-2, which is essential for TREG survival and function. Think of IL-2 as a kind of growth factor that keeps these peacekeepers going. So IL-2 is important for a healthy immune system, but it's also something tumors can hijack. That sounds like a significant vulnerability. Precisely. Tumors have developed a, a really cunning strategy. They can flood their surroundings with IL-2, essentially um, supercharging the TREGs in their vicinity. So the tumor is giving these peacekeepers extra resources, but to what end? I mean, what does the tumor gain by beefing up the tregs? This is where our peacekeepers take a turn towards the enemy lines. By pumping up the tregs, the tumor effectively builds a protective barrier around itself. A shield of tregs. So it's like the tumor has figured out how to dress itself up in an invisibility cloak, you know, for the immune system. An apt analogy. And this cloak is uh, surprisingly effective. The article you shared highlights three main ways these, you know, hijacked tregs help tumors grow. I'm all ears. How did they go from, like, peacekeepers to accomplices? Well, first they do what they do best, but now it's bad news for us, right? They suppress the activity of other immune cells, the ones that would normally recognize and attack the tumor. They're so good at their job that they can even shut down a whole anti-tumor immune response. Wow, talk about a hostile takeover. Second, they start releasing this whole cocktail of chemicals that further weaken the immune response in the area surrounding the tumor. It's like, uh, you know. It's getting worse. It's getting worse, yeah. But there's more, right. There were three ways these tregs helped the tumor. Right. The third way is by outcompeting other immune cells for that vital IL-2 we talked about earlier. So they're like these IL-2 vacuums just sucking up all the growth factors and starving out the, the other immune cells that need them to function. It sounds like tumors have really, really exploited this system for their benefit. So what can be done? Is there any way to, to fight back against this Treg shield? That's what researchers are, are working on right now, and it's a really critical area of research in cancer immunotherapy. Scientists are developing new therapies that specifically target TREGs and their ability to protect tumors. So it's like we're trying to develop countermeasures to the tumor's invisibility cloak. How are they going about that? Well, one very direct approach is using CD25 targeting antibodies. These are, uh, you know, engineered antibodies that lock onto that CD25 antenna on the surface of TREGS. Okay, so they're like guided missiles honing in on that specific target. Then what? Once attached, these antibodies act like flags, marking the TREGS for destruction by other parts of the immune system. It's a way to, to selectively eliminate those, you know, tumor-supporting TREGS. That's fascinating. It's like reprogramming the immune system to recognize those, those rogue TREGS as a threat. Hmm. What other strategies are, are showing promise? Another approach involves a bit of a balancing act, low-dose IL-2 therapy. Um, I know we talked about how tumors exploit IL-2 to boost TREGs, but remember, other immune cells also need IL-2 to function correctly. So it's a matter of finding that, that sweet spot, enough IL-2 to help the immune system, but not so much that it supercharges the TREGs. Exactly. It's tricky, but when administered at you know carefully calculated doses, low-dose IL-2 can actually stimulate those um, tumor-fighting immune cells without giving the TREGs too much of an advantage. It's like giving those other immune cells a, a fighting chance. Mm. Are there any other approaches scientists are exploring in this, this fight against TREG manipulation by tumors? 
Absolutely. Another uh, exciting avenue is the development of uh, combination therapies where different treatment methods are used together to target the tumor from multiple angles. One example of this is combining um, you know, checkpoint inhibitors, which are drugs that release the brakes on the immune system, with strategies to deplete those you know, tumor-supporting tregs. So it's a two-pronged attack, right. Disabling the tumor's defenses and unleashing the full power of the immune system you know, simultaneously. That sounds like a powerful one-two punch. Precisely. By combining these approaches, researchers aim to overcome tumor resistance and make the immune system a much more formidable opponent in the fight against cancer. But it's important to remember that targeting these pathways isn't a walk in the park. You know, there are challenges, as with any uh, complex biological system. Of course. What are some of the hurdles scientists are facing as they develop these trag targeting therapies? We're talking about, like, manipulating a really delicate system here. What are some of the challenges in making sure these therapies, you know, hit their mark? Well, one of the biggest challenges is achieving a high degree of selectivity. We've talked about how TREGs can be, you know, harmful in the context of tumors, but they're also essential for a healthy, balanced immune system overall. Right. We don't want to wipe out all the TREGs, yeah. just the ones that have, you know, gone rogue around the tumor. Exactly. Therapies need to be incredibly precise, you know, targeting only those tumor-associated TREGs while leaving the rest to do their job. <laughs> it's like uh, performing microsurgery on the immune system. So it's about finding that that delicate balance between effectiveness and minimizing collateral damage. Mm -hmm. Are there any other challenges in targeting TREGs for cancer treatment? Another challenge lies in making sure these therapies actually reach their intended target you know, within the tumor microenvironment. Systemically depleting TREGs throughout the entire body could disrupt immune balance and potentially lead to, you know, serious side effects like autoimmune disorders. That makes sense. We wouldn't want to accidentally turn the immune system against healthy tissues. So precision targeting is, like, paramount. But tumors are, you know, notoriously good at adapting and evading our best efforts. Are they finding ways to to resist these new TREG targeting therapies? That's the million dollar question, and it's something researchers are you know constantly investigating. Tumors are incredibly adaptable, and there's always a risk they could evolve mechanisms to resist even the most you know sophisticated therapies. This highlights the need for ongoing research, not only to develop new treatment strategies, but also to anticipate and overcome you know potential resistance mechanisms. It sounds like a constant arms race between scientists and these ever-evolving tumors. It's a race we're determined to win. And the more we learn about the intricacies of the immune system, how tumors hijack it, and how to reprogram those pathways, the closer we get to developing truly effective and durable cancer treatments. That's certainly encouraging. So for our listener who sent in this question about TREGS, What's the uh, the key takeaway message? The immune system is a powerful weapon against cancer, but it's not infallible. Tumors can exploit the very mechanisms that are designed to keep us healthy like they do with TREGS. But by understanding these complex interactions and developing therapies that target those pathways, we can shift the balance in favor of the immune system and ultimately improve outcomes for patients battling this incredibly challenging disease. This has been an incredible journey into the world of TREGS. CD25, and this really complex interplay between our immune system and cancer. It's amazing. You know, this case of the rogue peacekeeper has really opened our eyes to just how crashy tuners can be and how researchers are, you know, working tirelessly to develop innovative new therapies to fight back. As always, thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive. Keep those curious minds engaged, and we'll see you next time for another deep dive into the world of science and discovery.